The price of uranium is back over $50, close to $51. I've been buying a lot of uranium stocks, over 40 uranium stocks, put over six figures in them so far. I'm gonna let you know in this video my plan, what I've been doing, I've been day and swing trading as well. There's been a lot of huge news for the uranium market, the overall market. I'm gonna talk about four or five uranium stocks in this. We're gonna break those down into detail. And one of those is not a uranium stock. I have been swing trading some other stocks, some big opportunities. I've not felt like this really since March of 2020. And a lot of uranium stocks we've seen have went back to 2020 prices. So I've been buying, but I'm still heavy, heavy cash, very heavy cash. But we're gonna just touch on this in this video. A lot of interesting things. So in the past couple days, I've been starting to take more day trades. Now I have actually bought Carnival Cruise and I'm gonna detail in this video towards the end and show you my process for non-uranium stocks and how I do my you know, research, fundamentals, technicals, and we're gonna to touch on that. And this trade particularly, it was a swing trade. I think it's very oversold, the stock. I, we're gonna look at the charts, but it was about a $14,000 profit. And I took a trade in UEC and it was about $4,700 profit. Now I'm trying to do these every day. I, I call it surfing. So I like to get in, get out really quickly, just, you know, because these are so volatile with the market, the market was down and then boom, the overall market jumped up, you know, CPI numbers. We're gonna talk about that though in this video, but this is my new portfolio sheet. I'm tracking it with the Uranium Tracker. So if you're in the Discord, the private Discord, the link to the Uranium Tracker is there. All of these, you know, things I cover are in there, but my new portfolio, I have everything listed in here. Because of the subscribers in the Patreon, I'm not gonna show everything right now specifically, but I do have a major cash position still over 90%, but I am buying and I bought six figures already in uranium stocks, but I'm still doing heavy day and swing trading. I think the best opportunity is there. But uranium stocks, I have another tab here as well in here for you guys that follow in the uranium sheet, but it's back to 52 week highs. Now the 52 week highs were, you know, we had last year, we had that big run up, right? There are a lot of stocks in uranium that have very big upside. You know, most, most of these you know, in the small caps have 100% upside. But I have been buying a lot of these. And specifically in this video, we're gonna talk about Anfield Energy. We're gonna go into detail about their mill, some crazy coverage. I did not know the mill was this good. It has me very bullish. And uh, Axel Resources is another one. This is another one we've, we have some big activity in. We'll talk about that. And then Cameco, obviously, some very big news. And UEC, UEC is just stacking up those pounds, right? I think UEC right now, I think it says, this is where I track it, this is what I give them. It's about 365 million pounds with their new acquisition. So they're getting up there, it's, it's pretty crazy. Now this changes daily, this is the uranium sheet um, in, in this changes. So, but I'm gonna let you guys know that if you want access to this, it's in the link in the description below. If you wanna do the day and swing trades with us, there's a lot of people doing very well, sometimes even better than me. Um, people, you know, my, my risk tolerance is very high. I have that high cast position and I have a lot of gains this year from day trading February, March, and April. So my trading style, we'll go more into detail with that later on. But right now, if you see in pre-market, the market's down slightly. We had that big run up. So being a Friday, I expect it to be down. Now I do have a new area here for cruise stocks. I think these have been beaten down. We'll look at them in one second. It is starting to flag up Carnival Cruise. And like I said, and later in the video, we'll talk about that. But we're going to first go into the uranium stocks. But uranium stocks had a pretty good day yesterday. Centris Energy, about 7% you know, energy fields and UEC about 5%. Now we did have that big sell off and we're still pegged around $22 for Cameco. And it is because of the Westinghouse acquisition, 49%. We're going to talk about that. There's some very interesting things. Westinghouse was the big fuel producer back in the 1970s. Now what was funny, and we'll talk about it in a minute more in detail, but they failed to deliver. It was about 65 million pounds, okay, of uranium. And uh, we're we're seeing, it's funny that we're seeing Cameco, you know, buy them up. I think it is very bullish for the uranium market, but obviously shareholders are gonna pay in the short term. And with higher interest rates, we start to see sometimes some big volatility. You know, they they did raise, it was oversubscribed, I believe as well. So it is, it is bullish. Now, Sprout Physical Rain Trust, they're now, near that premium and they are buying and they are starting to raise more money. So Sprout Physical Uranium Trust did pretty well as well, close to 7%. Still needs to be a lot higher up there, obviously. But uh, Australian uranium stocks as well, we saw uranium stocks in Australia, majority of them were up a few percent down here. 
you can see. But a lot of people, especially in Australia, usually on, on Friday or Mondays, they're going to sell off. Now, we might see that today in the U.S. markets. A lot of people taking profits. A lot of the bigger stocks, we can see Tesla. They're down a, a percent or so. And, and, and Carnival Cruise as well. is. We saw a big run up uh, the last few days in the pre-market. But uh, if you see the overall market, they had a pretty good day. This was yesterday, full market performance. And you can see, you know, when Apple's up 3%, Microsoft... Money, there's a lot of money on the sidelines, including my own. It needs a place to go. Uh, really quickly, before we jump into the uranium and then later on into Carnival Cruise, I just want to show you the chart here. For the year, it has just been beaten down like crazy. And I'll show you, like I said, a lot of why I think this stock has big upside. You know, 73% from you know the high back in October, right? This is just insane. So it has a big upside, right? You know, 300 plus percent breaking out into, into this territory. But uh, you can see a lot of the shorts. There's a lot of shorts. The market cap's just so low. The market cap, $8 billion right now. They have a cash position of about $7 billion. And they have all these assets. They're the biggest cruise liners out there, right? And they, they cater to the lower middle class, right? So they have all these coupon deals out there. And we'll get into that more in detail. But I honestly think that this, especially... Right now, this is just a big upside. This feels like March 2020. Their bonds are holding up pretty well. So I really don't think that the company is going to go bankrupt in a few years. You know, no matter what, I think that there is still upside in this stock, major upside. And it does feel like March of 2020 to me. You know, we've had such a big sell off here. 5,000 plus institutions in this stock and they have been trimming and selling down in the past, you know, six, 12, eight months. And we're starting to see somewhat of recovery here, some buying. And uh, I mean, just look at the upside here, just insanity. And, um, you know, if, if we get back to, you know, pre-March 2020 levels, it's the, the sky's the limit in this stock, right? Because this stock, I mean, you can't even go on the chart here. You got to really pull it down. But uh, you can see the market cap's almost 50 billion here. It actually did hit 50 billion, 51 billion. Now, I'm not saying it's going to get back to this instantly, but just where we're at, I mean, this is kind of crazy. And just with their cash position right now, $7 billion, their bonds are holding up pretty well. It feels like March of 2020. So I did buy into that stock. You know, if I would have been holding, because I actually got down here in about 620, 616, I got some 616s. I wanted it to get the lowest price in 20. 5, 30 years, actually. So the, the the stock actually had the lowest price since the pretty much 1995. Now, the stock only did two splits back then. It was around 95. I think it was twice. And it was uh, two to one splits. It wasn't even a reverse split. So like I said, getting the stock this low. Now, the market cap, it doesn't show how much it was back then. It's, it was obviously a lot smaller. But, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty crazy just what you can get right now uh, in the market. Like I said, March 2020 prices. And I, I don't think that we're going to see, we can still look at the NASDAQ and you can see the NASDAQ. We're still far really from that low March of 2020 and we're still getting March 2020 prices. So there is still, you know, better deals out there possibly in the market if we get down into the 9,000 range. I think it is still possible to break down into the 9,000 range. You know, there's a lot of people shorting the market, a lot of people you know, are, are, are still needing to put money somewhere though. Being a contrarian investor, being a uranium investor, you know, seeing deals like this, it really, you kind of know how to play it because, um, you know, if, you, if as long as they don't go bankrupt, now I'm not saying this company won't go bankrupt in a few years, but there's no doubt just the way the bonds are holding up. I don't think that this company is going to go bankrupt, uh, especially with their, their earnings, their revenue coming back in. And they hit like a record in 2019, right before we had the big sell-off, right? And they could get back to that pretty quickly. There's a lot of pent up demand that has not came back into this. But we'll look into that more in details. But just to give you guys that info, what I've been doing. And, you know, it is kind of funny. Kramer, by the way, we're talking about Cameco now. Kramer did say with Cameco that he believes that it was a really lousy deal with Westinghouse Electric. I would never have done that deal if I were them, he added. Like, what does he really know? It's, it's kind of funny. So it's obviously very bullish, right? if Kramer is against it. Bloomberg reported on this the other day. So Uranium Minor Chemical to buy stake in Westinghouse Electric. So they are going to, with Brookfield Renewables, they'll own 51%. And uh, this means that, you know, they're going to have a big part of that fuel cycle now. And this is, this is something really that's very bullish for the full sector, the overall uranium sector. And what they did say in here is this is our entry into the nuclear power segment which is, we believe, a critical technology for global grids. So buying Westinghouse will give the company more direct access to customers that will need its fuel. 
we like to see and like to think of ourselves as more than just mining. And this is just an extension of that, CEO said. So he expects the deal to be accredited to cash flow and earnings. Um, the thing is, they, they obviously had to raise, and that's why we've seen the, the stock drop 12%, 22 bucks. So Cameco committed about $2.2 billion in equity towards this acquisition. So, you know, this this is really big for the uranium sector. I do, I do like to see this. It does, you know, I think wake up a lot of big bigger institutions to see what's going on over here. Now we add this inflation rate. We'll go back into next. It's going to be UEC and we're going to talk about some Anfield, but really quickly inflation, you know, we're not seeing this cool off as fast as people thought. Some people were saying seven, maybe even six, just 8.2. And this is with whatever the fed could do, trying to lower prices, really, you know, do as much as they could raise those interest rates. But they're not gonna, I don't think they're gonna pivot. I think that we're probably gonna see inflation higher. Uranium prices obviously are going to be higher. And uh, this is kind of just where we're at. Commodities, uranium is really one of the leading ones that this week. We've seen everything else pull back. This is also bullish. We'll talk about that. When crude oil does go down, it is somewhat bullish for cruises, but some cruises do hedge and some have liquid natural gas. And who knows, maybe someday they'll have nuclear powered ships. That would be awesome. Small modular reactors. Would be phenomenal. We already have that, like in in a lot of the military. It's kind of where we're at. And then the stock market right now, it's about two forty three a.m. on the Pacific Coast, West Coast, Best Coast, and uh, Nasdaq is down. So, like I said, I'm gonna get some good deals today. Definitely gonna be buying, you know, uranium if it sells off today. Some more, and it's hard to get in positions. Some of these stocks that I've got positions in, you know, when you're appointed to put five figures in a stock, maybe even six figures, and it's a very small market cap, it takes forever to fill it. I will go into UEC, by the way. This stock, man, this management, Amir is phenomenal now. Like, honestly, he he did a 180. Now, UEC to acquire Rough Rider from Rio Tinto, and it's 150 million bucks, right? 80 million in cash and 70 million in stock. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Way better than what uh, Cameco did. And that's why we didn't see the stock you know, go down too much. Now, the cash portion of the consideration is fully funded with $173 million cash, right? Because they have no debt. They have all that cash. This stock is a no-brainer. And I think they're at 400, I think, what do we say? 400 and, uh, what is it? Or almost 400. 365 million pounds is what they'll have with this. This is really crazy. And, uh, you know, just the upsides for UEC really quickly, about 70% back to the 52-week highs. And that's what the consensus report is right now. This this asset is is phenomenal. 58 million pounds, an average grade of 4.73%. This is crazy. They've got the UXC assets. I mean, I love this stock. Now, this stock, no doubt, uh, I I want to I wanna see a 3, 4, 5, 6, 10 bagger you know, from this, we get $200 uranium. The sky's the limit. There's no, with an unhedged company like this, who knows what the market will value with this. This could be a 25 bagger. This could be a 50 bagger. Who knows? You know, if we get 200 plus dollar uranium and uh, this company can hedge at higher, higher prices, I'm talking $200 uranium and get a lot of contracts in over 150 bucks. It would be phenomenal. Imagine that. And they've already got that 5 million pounds of physical and, uh, you know, you don't know what the overall market could do. We never saw massive amounts of funds come into uranium stocks, right? The the market caps were still fairly small compared to just, uh, you know, the, the average stock in, in the stock market, right? So if we start to see like big oil come into this, there, there's a possibility this could be a massive mover. You know, I think uranium stocks easily could be, you know, uranium producers like this could see new highs with their market caps. And in the 70s, we we saw that, right? Big oil companies were the ones that did this and they made a ton of money, okay? Uh, Denison Mines was, was, was really big, right? It grew really fast. They were bringing in, Denison Mines was a top 150 stock in the entire world. And this was the 1970s, right? Top 150. And uh, I learned that in my uranium uh, cartel book. But this is, uh, this is really awesome. I like the fact that they unlock value with immediate UEX acquisition as well. Rough Rider is 100% owned, right? And you usually don't see that, right? 100% owned. And like I said, they're 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 unleveraged. Uh, and the the things that they could do in the future with all of these assets, it's just insane. They could sell. They're gonna have no you know problems with getting financing. 
I think, especially having the 5 million pounds of U308 once uranium goes higher. By the way, Haywood, really think that thankful that Haywood puts these out. Haywood is one of my favorites now in covering, and we're going to talk about that why in a minute, because they really covered Anfield more than anyone has ever done. And maybe even in more in-depth, and this is what I love about smaller sectors, more in-depth than you get from Carnival. Carnival Cruise, you know, a massive company. You know, there's a lot of you know, analysts out there, but you get to really see up up front, like these companies. And Anfield was one of them. They, they're showing 20, 30 pictures of the mill and talk about it, each piece. And it looks brand new pretty much to me. It's crazy. So this is where we're at. So UEC remains in acquisition mode. Now, I really honestly think, and this is just my opinion, that because UEC owns such a big portion of Anfield and they, they switched those assets, right? Those ISR assets, got the Anfield assets and uh, gave Anfield some of their traditional assets that with that mill, it's a very big buyout target. And with a $30 million market cap of Anfield, I think UEC could take them out instantly. They already owned, you know, 20% almost of the company, 19.1%. Did exceed the cash on hand, but 47 million was what it was. But it could, they could actually sell some of those physical uranium pounds I was talking about. 1.8 million pounds of physical inventory on hand would cover that. And the thing is, they, they have access to up to 5 million pounds locked in at $38. And we see the spot price right now at 50, 51 bucks almost. So very, very bullish. So Rough Rider hosts a historical non-concurrent resource across the east and west deposits, 57 million pounds, 4.73%. Man, that's beautiful. Based on the total consideration of 150 million, the deal reflects an acquisition cost of $2.59 a pound. It's insane. Significant discount to UEC's current EV pound resource trading metric. It's about 4.23, getting those UEX assets this will be a lot better, I think. So they're starting to get that really low. Uh, we saw Anfield's probably one of the lowest as well for you know developer producers coming out up. Uh, while Rough Rider could benefit from resource expansion to solidify a position in the future global production pipeline, we do not believe there's potential for UEC to gain market recognition for the asset in excess of the acquisition price in a rising uranium price environment and consider Rough Rider to be UEC's premium asset in the basin. As mentioned prior, Rio Tinto purchased Rough Rider in 2012 in a bidding war with Cameco, which ended in a $642 million acquisition on the Rough Rider project. I mean, this is after Fukushima, right? So, which outlined a conventional underground mining operation using a base case of $70 a pound price, indicating a 1 billion MPV. So, with Rough Rider, there's more than uh, 650 drill holes. Uh, UEC will not work to publish an updated technical report on the project, it says. And it says, we recommend accumulating shares at the current levels for leverage to improving uranium sector fundamentals. You know, I, I agree with that. I've, I've started to buy, I've been day trading though, day and swing trading, still holding holding a core position, but day and swing trading this stock specifically, you know, I can pretty much get my position for free long-term. And I, I pretty much already have because I bought this stock at 20 something cents and I've day traded it so much. I've day traded it and I was buying and selling all the way up to $6, 6 you know, it was, it was almost 660, I think is what it hit. But, uh, you know, they're saying that they think it's going to be back to 660 as well. And this is currently what it's about. Year-to-date performance, it's a little higher, I think, than this now. You know, still not very many shares outstanding compared to some of the uranium stocks out there. Producers with a billion plus shares, right? And its market cap still small. There's still a good amount of cash on hand. And uh, I think that because of these, these assets that they're getting, and it's, it's such a high grade along with the UEX assets, all these assets that they got, it's it's phenomenal, right? And we're we're gonna see, I think, the market, because this is the second most liquid uranium stock in the entire market. I think you're gonna start to see a lot more funds coming into this stock. I think there's 175 plus already. You know, and some of those are not like, you know, big big investors or anything. And sometimes it's small positions, but once you start to get a big amount coming in, it's gonna be really big. And um not only does Rough Rider add world-class projects to anchor UEC's Canadian high asset conventional business with the UEX assets, it's providing the company with critical mass to advance its production plans. And this is obviously in the Athabasca Basin. They're going to be doing really well in the United States, but also in the Athabasca Basin. Now, we're going to switch over to Cameco now. We'll, we'll talk on this. So, 
the stock dropped a bunch and people ask me why and it's you know they're they're having to do this this raise this base shelf prospectus right and you know they needed to raise this you know, 650 million dollars right so they had the issue now in, in my opinion um, I'm, I'm kind of glad I was not in the stock uh, I knew a lot of people that have been and you know they this is such a, a good company right that it, it hit 52 week and 11 year highs back in April right so the company is very well ran and they've obviously have got the some of the best assets in the world, the most uranium, and they contracted 50 million pounds this year, year to date, right? And we are still seeing 700 million pounds that needs to contract long-term. So 50 million pounds is what Cameco had said they contracted for. So the company, although they are, when the price of uranium goes up, it's not necessarily, it's still good for the overall uranium market, but not as good for them if they are not getting back all their assets into production and they're having to buy in the spot market. That can mess things up. Uh, and that's what people have said. Now, one thing funny with this Westinghouse deal, this was the New York Times in 1976. You've heard me talk about it before. But they said that Westinghouse disclosed that it was 65 million pounds short of the vital fuel it needed and con and contracted to deliver and that fulfillment of the contracts had become commercially impracticable. This is, this was crazy. You know, we're seeing a company like Westinghouse back in the day because of the uranium price went up so much and they contracted Westinghouse and the more than 20 utilities affected by the contract action are scheduled to confront each other in tomorrow's United States district court. So they did settle this. It was one of the biggest lit litigations of all time, multi-billion dollars in the 70s. And, you know, you have the financial crisis, you have inflation, energy crisis. It's funny now that the Cameco is getting this because people have said Cameco could face some of the same issues if they can't get their, you know, with inflation and things going up, trying to get these these mines back in in operation to meet the the demand that's coming. If they're they have to buy in the spot market and the spot market goes to $150. It can be, you know, for their financials, it can be a little rough, right? But, you know, they, they do have a lot of long-term contracting. So we're going to move on to Anfield. Now, this is uh, Canadian six cents, right? A look inside Uranium Mill Prime for revival. By the way, thank you so much, Haywood, for putting this stuff out there. And like I said, this, this is a, a massive, massive data dump, 20 plus pages, but it's pictures and really shows how well this mill is since the 80s and how you know well it's ran i mean look at that you know it looks it looks great and the machinery is still in there we'll talk about each little piece real quickly but i mean look at look at how cool this place is and um as i've said before this is in the prime location there's hundreds of uranium mines in the u.s that will get up over when uranium is over a hundred dollars that uh, a lot of these companies and maybe even big oil might even jump back into it that's my my thought but we recently visited Anfield's Shooterian Canyon Mill in Utah and also visited select properties within the West Slope Project portfolio in Colorado. So Anfield acquired the Shooterian Canyon Mill and the assets, the stockpiles there, uh, the Velvet Wood Uranium Vanadium Project in Utah and the Frank Uranium Project in Utah, among other assets, from Uranium One in 2015. The Jeterian Canyon Mill is one of only three conventional uranium mills in North America. And it's licensed in the U.S. and has the capacity to process 1,000 tons of ore, 750 TPD, and 1 million pounds of U-308 per year licensed production capacity, right? This is licensed. Now, this license would be very hard to get now. We know the process it takes. We're very interested in checking out the mill due to its rare license status and extremely brief production history. This is why I've, I've already invested a bunch and I've got so, so lucky getting into this stock at the price it is now. You know, close to three to four cents, right? It's, it's hit recently. It's insane. $30 million market cap. So having operated for just six months, this was in the 1980s, uh, following completion of the construction in 1982, producing only 27.8 kilograms of U-308, uh, the mill shows surprisingly well given its idle state and age. And having seen little use in 30 years, we can easily envision a scenario where the mill becomes a regionally important strategic asset in a district with a protracted history of uranium mining. Many pro proximal 
known uranium vanadium deposits scattered throughout this area could potentially feed the mill in a classic hub and spoke strategy. And that's what they want to do, right? So one of the things is this is where the mill is actually located. If you've seen this in the video, just hold out. I'm going to touch on some really interesting stuff with it. This is where it's at, Sheteran Canyon Mill in Utah, right? Well, if you look here, this is where the most uranium mines, 100 plus in this area, probably two to 300, 400 in this little area. You know, this is uranium, just uranium. And uh, it was 1.4 billion pounds of U308 in the U.S., over $100 uranium. And this is what the what the Sheteran Canyon Mill looks like. It's 48 miles east of Hanksville, Utah. And uh, it's actually 48 miles south. And one of, we said, one of three licensed mills. So I honestly think this is probably going to be one of the big. And I really hope that it's not taken out just yet. I really would like to see it, you know, at least 5x maybe even more, maybe 10X before an acquisition. A 5X would be good, and then if a company like UEC, and we'll talk about why UEC could come in, buy them out, we see a big percentage, right? 19.1% UEC has these warrants, right? And uh, we also see pretty good 3% here with uh, management. These are the, the big shareholders, right? And um, it, it's kind of crazy right now. Uh, and like I said, Lewis, I think Lewis has close to 10 million shares here. Now, Lewis is overseas. And uh, a lot of times with some of the other stocks, it shows up in his portfolio because it is managed. It shows up as um, SBC, but uh, it does not have his name uh, on there. But he does own, I've seen it, uh, about 10 million shares, I think. So, you know, what is that? Close to almost 2%, right, of the company, over 2%. But uh, he's very, very bullish. And, um, you know, there ever needs to be financing. I don't know if, Corey, if you're watching this, I know Lewis has said in the past he was interested in funding uh, uranium production, right? Getting a company back into production. And um, he he actually called UEX when they needed money and was going to loan them the 20-something million. He had that in cash. Um, and, you know, for a good deal, really good deal. Uh, and UEX never got back to him, which I think is really funny because he owned... He owned uh, a couple percent of the company too as well. But um, that's kind of where we're at. I do like this, what the way it's looking. And obviously with, like I said, the this this mill will be major, major asset to a company, a big uranium producer wanting to come in, right? And have another mill when these assets are up. And the thing is this, this mill the license is really where it's at, but this is what I thought. I did not know it was in this good condition. I had seen that picture before, but no one had really gone in there. And if you're a uranium CEO, you need to know, like, you got to be getting this type of footage out there, pictures. If you want, if you're an M&A company and you want, you know, someone to buy out, this is what you need to be doing. And Anfield was really lucky that Haywood came in. So this is, this is really in good condition, right? So this is uh, the house looking from the ore drop stage, upper right, ROM ore, conveyor belt, dust collector, lower left. I mean, this looks looks like it's in great condition, right? So the, the ore will run in there and they, they grind it up, right? Break it down, refine it. Uh, this is really nice, really good looking stuff. I mean, I don't even see major rust. The m and I mean, I guess the money in the past, you know, few decades has really gone well into keeping it looking pretty good. I mean, this is what you call in cars a barn find. I've said this before. Really, really good looking. And I like this expansion that they can do. You see how much room's out here? They could literally expand and really get this facility up. They have the permit already, so they could really up that permit millions and millions of more pounds very quickly and really do a, a good expansion. That's why, you know, maybe, maybe this company is a lot better than I thought it was. And, you know, I bought this stock, you know, for around what I bought of that now, Mar what, March of 2020, when this was a lot lower. Um, but the stock did well. I trimmed, took positions. I didn't like what the management was doing. There was warrants. A lot of the management was selling, but we we're in this just crazy environment, right? I did not know that the assets looked this good. I did not know that it was in this good condition. Now you see a lot of this stuff, it's pretty shiny. And a lot of companies, you normally don't see this. You don't see how much room, you know, that they have. A lot of times, you know, there's a bunch of companies, you know, out there 
depending where it's at, Athabasca Basin, you got a lot of uh, obviously miners right around, but there's so much room for expansion. And a lot of this stuff, I mean, look at it. They still got the equipment and uh, it's, it's looking really good to me for a company that's only $30 million market cap. I think it's very, very bullish. Now, these are some of their mines, by the way. This is one of their open pit mine there, West Slope in Colorado. So 26.9 million pounds. And what I do like about this, I, I like that they switched from their assets that were ISR, right? And gave those to UEC and are looking more conventional because I do believe the uranium pound price will go up over $75. So it will be good for them to actually get into production. Um, uh, so Corey, I think this Corey, Corey right here, I, I really like what he said and he did a recent interview and what he was saying was they, they, they brought on some more management that is, is actually operational, right? That's not just M and a, not just, you know, there to, to get rid of these assets. They really are looking to, to get into production and to get a uranium producer in the U S with a uranium Renaissance for this cheap is is really insane honestly what the company's updated with with all of their assets recently tells me that you know i, I probably need to add more to this just because of, of the license that they have in all these assets that that they hold they hold so many assets by the way getting rid of uh, some of those to uec was very smart but having uec 19 percent you know the company very bullish so anfield very very bullish now on anfield i really do like what they're doing and management might just do a turnaround, kind of like UEC did with Amir. Amir is now, in my opinion, the best uranium CEO out there. If he gets them into production, he's hands down another John Borshoff. Like, he's already doing that. I mean, the stock was 20-something cents, and it's already hit $6. He's already a John Borshoff. They've got almost 400 million pounds of uranium now. Now, granted, we do have the uranium renaissance in the U.S. Now, this could be playing differently. If we didn't have the war, we didn't have a lot of, uh, you know, those things happening, I think that you might see not as good upside in the U.S. And, th and I really wasn't thinking of this before. But with that, and with the U.S. wanting to, to really start its own enrichment capacity, which we never really have seen since the 70s and 80s, we're going to see that big market share come back in Anfield, UEC. These are where the companies are at. This is where I'm going to have a, a bunch in it. And uh, you can see management here. You can see there's a lot. They got a lot of skin in the game. Uh, a lot of options going off. Now, this is stock we're going to talk about next, AXL Resources. Now, this is one of the smallest uranium stocks in the entire market. But the stock has a rich history. They got really good assets, okay? And we've been seeing management buying in the open market. I love this. Even if it is, you know, they've they've got, well, three, was it 3 million, 3.3 million now? They're buying in the open market. And I really do like that. I really like that because this was really just a, a stagnant stock out there. And we see management with a good amount of skin in the game. We see you know 12% from Holy Stone Energy Company. And uh, this, to me, for a micro cap, we're talking tiny. What are we at? We're at, with AXL Resources, it is near, it has the biggest upside, right? Near Azincourt, 300% uh, and $6, six million dollar market cap. So, you know, at three cents right now, this thing has already seen a massive run. I think it was, you know, almost over 10 cents in the U.S. Now, it is duly traded. Now, this stock, being an exploration company, they do have good assets. Um, and, and it's not just uranium. They've got lithium and nickel. They've got copper. They've got some stuff there in Norway and uh, gold as well. Which for, for this deal, like I said, it's a March 2020 deal. If uranium goes up, there's no doubt this company will at least do uh, go back to where it was, a which is a 3X, right? Um, where we're at right now, $50-something dollar uranium, I think these are major takeover targets. Management is pretty good. Uh, Excel Resources, uh, they are getting more red cloud coverage now. I think they're paying for this. But uh, holds interest in 200,000 hectares. There's acres in Saskatchewan and Ontario. It also explores for nickel, copper, cobalt, and uh, their Firebird nickel project that's in northern Athabasca Basin, Saskatchewan. In addition, it holds interest in some gold projects consisting of 12 claims. Uh, it also holds 100% interest in the Gibson Creek Uranium Project consisting of seven mineral claims, and that's about, what, 13.8 Hectares located along the northern margin of the Athabasca Basin. I mean, we're, we're talking about a bunch of projects, right? 
bunch of different projects. Um, they they did they were Axel AXL Uranium Corp and they changed its name to AXL Resources Corp January 2020. This is when you know we were starting to see a lot of obviously drops by March, right? And in, in every stock, so Uranium was not favored at this point. I honestly think they should change their name back to Uranium Corp. I mean, it's a Uranium Company. It was incorporated in 2007. It's headquarters there in, in Vancouver, but you know. And by the way, I like this site too. You guys asked me, we see X, AXL Resource CEO CA. You can go in here, you can see those insider filings. Um, has people, a lot of clowns a lot of times, but there has been controversy here. I think there's been like insiders on here giving uh, information out and there's been people that have sued people from the companies that have posted on here. So there is drama. You got like short history here. You got community wiki, wiki and the Cedar documents. I really like that. When um, they post a, a new document, you'll see it in here. Now, one thing we will talk about real quick, and I think I already have it open. One thing, uh, by the way, that's what's real cool. You got the Cedar. These are for your Canadian companies. Uh, but one thing is they they actually did a private placement. Now, this is for Canadian investors. Um, I would have I would have done this, but I'm not Canadian, right? Uh, but they increased their private placement financing to one million. So it looks like it's oversubscribed. So, I mean, of course, when they're raising $1 million and it's got like a $5, 6000000 million market cap, of course, it's going to be in, in a uranium bull market. So, uh, I would have liked to obviously have done this, but I've just been buying in the open market. So, this is one that I have been buying. It's, it's a no-brainer for me. Um, they, they own also these lithium projects, and, and we're starting to see a lot of these things take off. I think a lot of their assets, they should get rid, in my opinion, of every single asset, especially like lithium, gold copper, get rid of everything and just change your name back to uranium. Uh, you know, if you're watching this, by the way, guys, I get like my inbox is, has been full with uranium companies asking me if I will do an interview. And here's the thing. I'm not going to do an interview with uranium companies. I'm not going to be paid because I've never done that. And I, I don't want to do that. I, I want to be in a sense free. I don't want to say, have to disclose in a sense and say like, I'm being paid for this because I'm not, I don't get paid for this. Uh, I think it just, takes away my credibility. I would rather just, you know, cover the stocks if I want to cover them. And this is one that I want to cover. Having a million dollars cash, they're looking to uh, explore, do some more exploration. I, I think just, you know, with the cash, the, a lot of these uranium stocks too, without having really any debt, a lot of them now and having the cash, there's really no downside in my opinion, like a bankruptcy. Now, when I was buying uranium or uh, gold stocks in 2006, 2007, when I first started trading stocks, all those stocks pretty much went bankrupt. I didn't know what I was doing back then, right? And gold stocks is like one, of, one out of a thousand gold stocks will only pretty much in a sense make it, especially from the exploration phase. But uh, one of my stocks did 10X and I held that stock for a decade. And um, they it was a tiny, tiny gold company and I think they switched. Uh, TGGI. So it did 10X and I held that company for 10 years plus. And then I recently sold it this past uh, year because it ran up with, with all the craziness, right? It was still able to not be de delisted at the time. Anyways, getting off on a tangent, but that's kind of where we're at. So AXL Resources, uh, I do like I do like that stock as well. So UEC, AXL, Anfield, these are stocks really on my radar. I've been buying... Um, but you know, bigger liquid stocks like UEC, it's easier for me to, to swing trade and really rack up the profits so I can establish a longer term position, maybe in another portfolio, another account. And that's really kind of my plan. Now, like I said, just covering up what we said about AXL resources. So um, it looks like, like I said, their board's pretty good. They've got a pretty good, uh, you know, I think management team. But going forward, the company plans to conduct a deep penetrating airborne EM survey at their Sabre, that's the uranium project, to detect basement conductors. A prospecting and geological permit is in application form, which is expected to be followed by a winter drilling permit. Meanwhile, the company is planning pros prospecting and sampling across properties in the summer and fall of 2022. So this was this is back in June. So the, this is what's actually starting to happen. And this is coverage by uh, Red Cloud. We're going to jump into Carnival Cruise. Now, this is going to be very interesting. I want you all to stick around for this because when we'll talk about some uranium news at the very end of this video, I've also got that on the list here. But uh, one thing, we've got about 
10 or 10 to 12 pages I want to show you of this. Now, this is CCL and we showed you the chart. Now, this is what it looked like. This is what the financials look like in 2021 and 2020. Obviously, that's it's horrible. They couldn't conduct business. But the projected forecast is over, it's close to $21 billion, right? And we're, we were at, what, $21 billion in 2019. That was a record. So if they're going to get back to this and then break out $23, $24 billion by 2024, it's a very nice long-term play. Uh, and I really do, they're, they're starting to bring in a lot more earnings. They don't have the dividend either, holding them back, I think. Uh, they haven't done that since the very beginning of 2020. March 2020, but getting a March 2020 stock is, is crazy right now. Uh, I do like this website. This is one thing I always check up on. So FINRA, uh, you can see their bonds, by the way. They have a bunch of, of information on the stock here, but specifically I like to look at the bonds. You know, they're not they're not doing the best, but you can see they're still holding up. March of 2020, they were a lot lower. So you can get the stock for cheaper pretty much, but you can see that it's still still holding up pretty well. This is a company that a lot of people have screamed bankruptcy. I haven't had this feeling really since GameStop with a company undervalued, especially in the big market, right? That, you know, obviously they, they weren't bringing in revenue, right? Because of what was going on. So the ROE was doing actually pretty well, right? In 2019. And then obviously not being able to perform for the last couple of years, it's dropped. But, um, with with the way things are going, I think that they're going to turn things around. They've got a new CEO, and uh, that's one of the big things. When, when a company, when I see, is very undervalued and they get new management. And by the way, this CEO, he was the treasurer of uh, Carnival Cruise during the global financial crisis 2008, right? So this company, and no pun intended, has sailed through every financial crisis, every war, everything, you know, been listed since the late 80s every market crash, the dot-com bubble, and it's still around. And if it could still not bank be bankrupt from the last couple of years, it does have a good amount of debt, right? But I think these numbers are starting to improve as things go on here, right? And, uh, you know, I really hope they just hold off on this dividend. And, and you know, I don't want to see the dividend going. But uh, you can see this is the Altman Z-score. And, it, this is why the stock's really kind of also selling off. A lot of people are worried bankruptcy. I felt the same way about GameStop. I knew that the company wasn't going to go bankrupt. I knew that the shorts had it wrong. Now, this stock has more shares, a lot more shares than a stock like GameStop did. I was buying GameStop about $4. So to be able to buy this stock, $7 billion cash, and the market cap's close to $7 billion, I think it's pretty safe for now. I think that you know their revenue last quarter, I think, was $4 billion. So getting back up to 20 plus billion. Now the Altman Z score, once their financials start to come in, they're 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 doing a lot better. This is gonna go back up. I think a lot less people are gonna start to really see the upside of this stock. These cruise stocks really haven't got this. Now they've had these obviously these multiple black swans. Now Weinstein, he's the new CEO, one I told you about. Uh, he said he won't predict the future. I do like that. He's basically saying that Carnival Corp has modeled the possibility of global you know, issues that happen, the company business planning, though, he suggests it hadn't conceived of the magnitude of the effects, what would happen. But no one really knew that was going to, that, that everything was going to be shut down like it was at the time. Um, but the growth is growing in, in cruise bookings, right? And Carnival Cruise is, is very unique because they, they have a bunch of different companies and sectors, and they really do cater to the middle and even lower class, like some of these very cheap cruises. Uh, but I, this isn't going to go anywhere. This industry is not going anywhere, in my opinion. And you see, there's a good visual. These are some of the websites, Macro Trends. I do like to sometimes just look at to get a visual. Sometimes it's a little different. But you can see this is what they brought in, $21 billion, And then going into, obviously, when they had to shut everything down, nothing really. And it's starting to pick back up. So, I mean, if the revenue goes back up and they don't go bankrupt, there's a big upside in the stock, right? At least a three, four, even a five bagger back to these 2019 levels. And the projections are they're going to beat this. We're looking at like Well Wisdom. There's been, there's like 5,000, I think, companies that, that had held this. And, you know, a lot of them just have been trimming the past this year and have totally got rid of it, totally sold out. So that is one reason that the stock has performed the way it is. This is another FinViz. I used to really use this a lot. Sometimes I was showing you what I like to use. Uh, I didn't I didn't even log in my account here, but I do like to see 
I like I like data and I like to be able to see everything right here, kind of the way the way everything's going. But with a market cap, you know, eight billion, uh, where things are going with them getting the revenue back in, and if they can get the ROE back up, I mean, this is gonna be a great stock, and uh, I really do like it. The other thing is, uh, you can check out their their recent. Um, obviously, they have a loss. This is. Um, the SEC website. And I like to go in here and you can just kind of get a good overview when earnings come out, you know, the way things are going. And just looking at it right now, I, I still think that just with this big cast position, they're not going to go bankrupt. You know, they're not going to go bankrupt in the next year or so. So I think there's plenty of opportunity to surf this, you know. Uh, this is another website I like. I like to see there's there's a bunch of uh, things you can check out. Same thing, insiders. You can check out their, they've actually have, um, this is the the latest filings. They've got the transcripts. I like this as well. They've got uh, the financial summary. It's just a nice visual. There's so many websites out there. You don't even need a Bloomberg terminal anymore. And I like to cover a lot of this stuff in my sheets where it'll pull the information. But, um, oh, here's another one too, Open Insider. I like this website. And this is some of the stuff, I've already done a lot of this research uh, to buy the position and sell it. Uh, I told a lot of people in the Discord. So a lot of people did trade it as well in the Discord, but uh, but nothing too crazy right now. There's some of the things I look at, but uh, this is really kind of where we're at. This is a little thing showing that these cruises are starting to, to pick back up, getting back to this 100% capacity. These countries are opening up, Japan's opening up. Over 5 million passengers have uh, already sailed since this restart, of, since July. So things are getting picked back up. You know, I'm, I'm still bullish on that stock, especially day and swing trading. I think there's a lot of upside in it. But long term, I think the stock, there's very possibility, big possibility it does really well, right? Two, three X, maybe even more. Uh, so energy crisis. Uh, so Japan prepares to extend the operating life of nuclear power plants. Britain and France take the lead and build new reactors. Just so much, so much stuff. This will be 60 plus years. So much stuff going on. There's another website there. It says it's rumored that Japan is considering to propose to extend the commissioning of nuclear power plants to more than 60 years, possibly next year. So, I mean, we're just starting to see, there's just so much news to cover. Now, really guys, if you want me to do daily videos where I'm in this and maybe even I'll be showing my portfolio if I'm buying or selling you know, stocks live, and if you want me to do a live market update, let's get this video likes to like, let me say 1,200, 13, 1,400 likes. And that'll show me that you guys will be here watching it. Because I don't want to waste my time in a live video. Like, I'm fine with doing these videos, especially if you guys like them. Uh, let me know. But uh, uh, as far as a live market open video every day and then maybe saving these big coverage videos for like the weekends and stuff or, you know, if I don't do one possibly during the week, let me know. Should I do a live uranium and overall market video show you kind of how I track things? Cause you know, I'm, I'm plugged into everything. I'm seeing the entire market. I'm seeing the entire sectors, uh, commodities and it, and it's been doing really well for me. Right. Um, with, with the way things are going, you know, I'm going to still take these day and swing trades, but you know, stacking up almost 20 grand in a 24 hour period, this, this is, this is what I was doing in in March, April, and May, February, March, and April. So February, March, and April of this year. And I was doing very well with, with the volatile market, right? Um, taking profits. And that's why I, I've been able to really kind of go into something like Carnival, risky, because all of this is profits from this year. The the whole thing, it could be totally wiped out. The, the position could have went to zero. So I would have, it would have not killed my profits for the year. So I'm still really bullish on uranium, but I think we're starting to get into this next leg up. If we start to see buying again from Sput daily, they can get that premium and the market rebounds. I mean, because look at, you know, look at where the NASDAQ is at. If, if we can get any market rebound, it's just been so sold off, right? If we can get any recovery in, in this back up, you know, we're going to see, and then uranium prices go up. It's going to be a very nice move on this next leg up. But still, uh, right now, actually, Carnival is actually in the pre-market. It is actually up almost a percent. Uh, as far as the uranium stocks, UEC is down a percent. You know, looking at the chart, still looks phenomenal to me. Stock usually likes to break, set around this 420 mark. So that's probably another, uh, if I get back into it, day in swing trading today and just keep recycling it, taking the profits in. You know, we did see 
we did see, like I said, that the biggest uranium stock, you know, was down, but it is up half a percent. But I mean, just look at the visual for the week, how much it's dropped. I mean, it's unfortunate. A lot of people were buying, you know, just, I mean, September buying at 30 bucks. I mean, look at the drop that it's had just from there, right? We were, we were at such a big high, you know, that's a massive drop, 28, 29%. So, um, you know, this one really, really looking good. But I think that as far as unhedged, still UEC, in my opinion, and, and they still look the same, right? Very close, similar. A lot of these charts are still looking the same. A lot of, a lot of uranium stocks still very oversold. We're talking right now, if you look at in the uranium sheet, majority of these are have 100% upside still, as I said earlier. You guys enjoyed this video. As I said before, give the like and give me your number down below. Give a like and let me know, should I do these live uranium videos? Did you guys miss me? Are you day or swing trading any stocks? What do you guys think of you know the new process with the channel? Let me know below. Uh, very excited for things to come. And um, like I said, if you guys wanna see more, if you guys wanna day trade, swing trade with me, if you guys want access to the uranium stocks I'm buying and establishing a long-term position in, there's a link in the description below for the Discord, the private Discord, and uh, give it a try. Give it a try out. You have nothing to lose. Very excited, and uh, I'm going to try to get more videos out. And I, if you guys get this video to over a 1,000 likes, and it's going to tell me that you want me to start to do live videos, but comment below and let me know, would you even watch them? Uh, I might just do those in the Discord, by the way. A lot easier to do it in the Discord. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. 